What the... What is this place? What's your name, honey? Uh, I'm Joe. I teach middle school band. Got it, go for it! Today started out as the best day of my life. Back here tonight, first show's at 7. Yes! Woohoo! You know what that's gonna say? Joe Gardner! <laughs> I did it! I got the gig! Must have been sudden for you. great before. This is where new souls get their personalities, quirks, and interest before they go to Earth. Meet 22. I don't want to go to Earth. Stop fighting this. I don't want to. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, look, I already know everything about Earth, and I don't want anything to do with it. You're missing out on the joys of life, like, uh, pizza. I can't smell. We can't, we can't taste either? All that stuff is in your body. No smell, no taste, or touch. See? Okay, I get it. Wow. It's my life. Is all this living really worth dying for? You're still alive? Can you help me get back? No way! There I am. What are we waiting for? <laughs> Wait, not me! <laughs> Yes, weird. What is it? 151,000 souls go into the great beyond every day. And I count every single one of them. The count's off. Huh. The count is off. Huh. <laughs> uh, well, welcome. It's good to have you here today. If you're joining us for the first time, if you're joining us online, we're so glad that you're here. I met a couple just on the way in. It's only their second week, so it's just great to see lots of new people joining, and uh, welcome. My name is Tom. I'm one of the pastors here, and uh, we're actually in a series called God in the Movies, where we're looking for biblical truth in the films and the media around us. Now, some may say, well, why do you, you, know, why do, you do this series, God in the Movies? Why don't you just preach from the Bible? Isn't that enough? And my response to that is, well, this is a little different for us. Normally we do, of course, preach from books of the Bible. But hey, this series is not so much about the truth of movies. It's about God's truth that we find in the movies, right? Jesus used stories all the time. He told parables that made sense and resonated with the listeners of the day that pointed to deeper spiritual truths. And so that's really what God in the Movies is all about. It's about finding truth, God's truth. And so today, as we explore this Pixar movie, Soul, whether you've seen the film or not, whether you fell asleep in the film, like Liz, I know Kendall has had three rounds, he still can't get through it, but um, it doesn't really matter whether you've seen it or not. What matters is looking for the truth that this beautiful film points us to. You with me? Now, as you just saw from the trailer, uh, the movie is about, it centers around this guy, Joe Gardner. He's played by Jamie Foxx. He's a middle-aged jazz musician who teaches middle school band, but dreams of becoming a famous musician. And then one day, he gets the gig of a lifetime. He gets to play with his musical idol, Dorothea, and that is kind of what he's been waiting for his entire life. But then he falls down a manhole and dies right on the brink of a, cheat, of a sort of dream coming true. And he's on his way to heaven, or what they call in the film, the great beyond, when he kind of freaks out and he finds himself in a place called the great before. And that is where he meets soul number 22, played by Tina Fey. Now, she's hilarious in the film. She's hilarious in real life. I love Tina Fey. But she's been in the great before for thousands of years, and she thinks she knows everything there is to know about life on earth. She wants nothing to do with it. Uh, as we heard her say in the trailer, is all this living really worth dying for? And anyway, 22 gets paired with Joe as kind of a, sort of a mentor for her, and his job is to help her find her spark. 
so she can finally make her way to earth. Now, this next little scene explains what a spark is, how you get it, and then we see Joe's real motivation behind it all. Take a look. Hello there, mentors. I'm Jerry, a counselor here at the U Seminar. Now, you don't remember it, but you've been here before. But don't worry, forgetting the trauma of childbirth is one of the great gifts of the universe. Here at the U Seminar, all new souls are given unique and individual personalities. I'm an agreeable skeptic who's cautious yet flamboyant. I'm an irritable wallflower who's dangerously curious. I'm a manipulative megalomaniac who's intensely opportunistic. Oh, oh this one might be a handful, but that's Earth's problem. You'll notice these souls are all missing something. What goes in this spot? Well, these souls need their spark, and that's where you come in. Maybe you will find their spark in the hall of everything, where literally anything on Earth could inspire. Or perhaps you'll prefer the hall of you, featuring a selection of moments from your own inspiring life. And just what is this spark? to work so good luck finding the spark find the spark <laughs> so there we can see joe's real motivation is to help 22 find her spark so he can steal it get back to his body on earth and play in his big show uh, i love that little soul i'm a manipulative megalomaniac <laughs> well, that one's going to be a handful <laughs> but while joe's uh, scheme is to steal 22 spark he takes her on a tour through his own life. And while he's doing that, he comes to a sad and profound realization about his life. Here's the next clip. <laughs> I'll be right back. Don't get ahead of yourself, pal. By the way, why do you sound like a middle-aged white lady? I don't. This is all an illusion. Huh? This whole place is a hypothetical. I could sound like this if I wanted to. Or sound like this instead. I could even sound like you. Life is so unfair. I don't want to die. Somebody called the Whambulance. I just use this voice because it annoys people. It's very effective. <laughs> don't worry, they're fine. <laughs> can't crush a soul here. That's what life on Earth is for. Huh, very witty. It's my life. Um, excuse me, what's going on here? Banaka breath spray? Cheap cologne? Man, who curated this exhibit? <laughs> you did. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is Cedric's rap room. Oh. Uh, no, don't look at that stuff. Let's, let's look over here. Ted. I don't want to go. I don't like jazz. Black improvisational music. It's one of our great contributions to American culture. At least give it a chance, Joey. This is where it all started. This is the moment where I fell in love with jazz. Listen to that. See, the tune is just an excuse to bring out the you. And that's why I became a jazz musician. That's not what we're looking for. Wait, 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 that's not how I remember it going down. I mean, I, I, I'm back when you have something. Sorry, Joe. Sorry, Joe. We're looking for something different. Two, three, When I first watched this movie, this, this particular scene, and particularly that line, my life was meaningless, it really kind of hit me. Because to be honest, I know I've felt that way at different times in my life. And I know so many people who feel that way. Maybe you feel that way even now. They feel like a failure because they haven't accomplished what they thought they would or thought they could. They feel like perhaps they've never amounted to much. 
And I think this is one of life's greatest fears, right? A life unlived, a life unfulfilled, not doing, not having, not leaving your mark, not making a difference, not actually living, but just kind of going through the motions. And in many ways, this is what Joe has done his entire life. The cruel irony of it, he says in the film, I can't die die now, not when my life has just begun. But if you think about it, he's already more than halfway through his life and it doesn't feel like his life has even begun. I mean, how sad is that? So here's the question. Do you ever feel like Joe? Like life hasn't turned out the way you hoped it would or thought it could? Do you ever feel like a failure or that your life is meaningless. Or or maybe you feel like 22, maybe you feel like you don't know what your spark is, what your purpose is, what your calling is. I mean, according to statistics, that is one of the biggest reasons why people go to therapy, is to try and to discover, what is my purpose? Why am I here? What is this all about? What is my spark? Or maybe you're cynical, you're skeptical, like 22. Is all this living really worth dying for? You know, what I've found so often is that when there's an apathy or a bad attitude from someone, it's usually because they're masking a fear. You know, when people have bad attitudes or maybe they're arrogant or they're defensive or they're aggressive, they're usually masking an insecurity, right? And they don't want you to see it. And so they become standoffish or they become defensive or they push people away. 22 in the film acts like she doesn't care about going to earth, but really she cares about it a whole lot. And she's actually afraid, she's, she's worried. That's why she says, you can't crush a soul here, that's what life on earth is for. And maybe you know what that feels like to have your soul crushed. She's, a, she's afraid, she's scared that life won't be worthwhile or that she'll mess it up. And so she's like, well, I'm not even gonna try. And so those are the questions I wanna try to answer today from the scriptures, from biblical truth. What do you do when you haven't found your purpose? What do you do when you feel like you're a failure? 1 Timothy 6, verse six to eight says this, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. The Apostle Paul is writing to a young pastor by the name of Timothy, and it seems like what Paul is saying is, hey, just be content with having food on the table and a roof over your head, that's it. And of course, there's great wisdom in that. There's great wisdom in being grateful for that which we have, rather than lamenting that which we don't, right? But then what about ambition? I mean, the Apostle Paul was hugely ambitious. He traveled the known world spreading the gospel. He wrote a lot about following the call of God in your life, about stepping out and doing big big things for God's kingdom. So what about all of that? Sometimes people have asked me, you know, kind of sheepishly, like, is it okay for a Christian to be ambitious? (laughs) What about calling and purpose and impact? We say sometimes you were made on purpose and for a purpose. And here at E-Hills, we talk about discovering your unique gifts and wiring and place to serve God's mission, not our mission, God's mission, to bring healing and hope to this world. In a sense, we talk a lot as Christians about finding your spark. (laughs) So then the question is, can life be meaningful if we haven't found it yet or if you never find it? The next clip I wanna show you takes place on earth. And just so you can kind of track with the story, what's going on here is that Joe and 22, they've come back to earth together, but something went wrong in the process and Joe's soul ends up in a cat's body while 22's soul ends up in Joe's body. Super weird, okay? (laughs) But just roll with it, okay? Um, And so now 22 is beginning to experience life on earth through Joe's body, through his senses. She's beginning to touch and taste and see what life on earth is all about. Take a look.
So, you ready? Huh? To go home. I bet you're ready to get off this stinky rock, huh? What'd you think of Earth anyway? <sighs> I always said it was dumb. But... I mean... Just look at what I found. Your mom sewed your suit from this cute spool. When I was nervous, Des gave me this. A guy on the subway yelled at me. It was scary. But I kind of liked that too. <sighs> Truth is, I've always worried that maybe there's something wrong with me. You know? Maybe I'm not good enough for a living. But then you showed me about purpose and passion and maybe sky watching can be my spark or walking i'm really good at walking those really aren't purposes 22 that's just regular old living but hey when you get back to the u seminar you can give it an honest try no but i've been at the u seminar for thousands of years and i have never felt this close joe who's ready to go home <sighs> moon wins if you've seen the film, you'll know Moonwind is quite a character. But the reason I chose this clip is because of that one line that Joe says in response to 22. He says this, those really aren't purposes, 22. That's just regular old living. Turn to someone and say, regular old living. In fact, if I had to give this sermon a title outside of God in the movies or soul, I think I'd call it exactly that, regular old living living. Let me explain why. I mean, just to be clear, I believe in calling. I believe that God has wired every single one of us differently and uniquely and has a unique plan and purpose for our lives to make an impact, to make a difference for his kingdom, to live abundantly. In fact, one of my favorite quotes of all time is by a guy named Howard Thurman. He was a civil rights activist and he says this, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and go do it because what the world needs is people who've come alive. <laughs> I love that quote. And in, in many ways, it feels like my life purpose here on earth is to help people come alive <laughs> in, the, in the truest sense, in a spiritual sense. But here's the problem. So often, I think as Christians, we get so fixated on finding our calling, our purpose, that we completely miss out on the life that is happening right in front of us. And so part of this movie is about finding your purpose, finding your spark. But then there's another part of it, and perhaps maybe a more challenging and more profound idea is realize, realizing that even if I don't have it yet, even if I'm still searching for it, I don't need to, live, to wait to live. This is Psalm 118. It's kind of the core verse of this message, core verse of the movie. If you get nothing else, just remember this verse. It's Psalm 118, verse 24, and it says this. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Not tomorrow, not next week, not one day when. This is the day. I will rejoice and and be glad in it. It is an act of the will. It is a decision that we make to live in the present, to make the most of each day, because let's be honest, E. Hills, it's all we really have. Bill Keen famously said this, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift of God, which is why we call it the present. In Ecclesiastes chapter nine, Solomon, the wise old Solomon, he's looking back on his life and he says this, seize life, eat bread with gusto. I mean, this is obviously before the whole gluten-free keto <laughs> nonsense, okay. <laughs> Drink wine with a robust heart. Oh yes, God takes pleasure in your pleasure. Dress festively every morning. Don't skimp on colors and scarves. Relish life with the spouse you love each and every day of your precarious life. Each day is God's gift. It's all you get in exchange for the hard work of staying alive. Make the most of each one. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And this is what 22 begins to discover. This is what Joe eventually realizes, that actually regular old living is what life is all about. 
You know, this year, Jess and I will be married for 19 years. Can you believe it? Woo! Yeah. Just plain sailing the whole way. <laughs> She's watching online. Hey, babe. Um, <laughs> Usually when I tell people I've been married for 19 years, they look at me like, dude, when did you get married when you were 12? But anyway, a little bit older. But you know what I've realized looking back? It's not the big holidays or vacations, you guys say, or or the extravagant gifts that really stand out or that we remember. It's the little things that so often have made the biggest impact. The kiss when you get home, the holding of hands, Watching a film together. The the stacking of the dishwasher. Can I get an amen, ladies? Okay. (laughs) It's the regular old living stuff that makes a marriage, that makes a life. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's find out where this leads in the film. You see, Joe ends up stealing 22 sparks, sadly, which she now has. And he selfishly uses it to go back into his own body and he goes into, back to earth and he plays in this long-awaited show. And guess what? The show goes well. He plays perfectly. The crowd cheers. It's everything he's ever dreamed of until it's over. And then in this next scene, we see him standing outside the jazz club with, his, you know, with the famous singer, his idol, Dorothea, And he says, what happens next? And she tells him this profound little parable that makes him rethink everything. Listen carefully. So, uh, what happens next? We come back tomorrow night and do it all again. What's wrong, Teach? It's just, I've been waiting on this day for my entire life. I thought I'd feel different. I heard this story about a fish. He swims up to this older fish and says, I'm trying to find this thing they call the ocean. The ocean, says the older fish. That's what you're in right now. This, says the young fish, this is water. What I want is the ocean. See you tomorrow. can be my spark or walking I'm really good at walking it was really on purpose it's 22 that's just regular old living
beautiful, isn't it? When I first watched the film, I didn't, I enjoyed it when I watched it with my kids, but it was only when I watched it in preparation for today's message that I realized just how profound the message really is. So much so, I mean, this clip gets me every time. I was watching it again and preparing in Legends Coffee this week, and I literally had tears streaming down my face, trying to pretend like I wasn't crying in a coffee shop. (laughs) But recognizing and mourning the times that I had missed it too, missed the beauty and the wonder and the gift of just everyday stuff. My kids hugging me, laughing around the table, times I spent with with family that are now on the other side of the world. And we, guys, this life on this side of eternity is so short and so precious, it should never be taken for granted. And so often I miss it because I'm just trying to get to the next appointment or get the kids to sleep or whatever it is. As we kind of head towards the end of the movie and the end of this message, I want to leave you with just three thoughts, three ideas that I think can help all of us to rejoice and be glad in today, in this day, because this is indeed the day that the Lord has made, amen? And so the first thought is this, and these these three things may seem counterintuitive, but just stay with me. The first is this, stop trying to find your passion or your spark. You know, the world and our Instagram feeds are full of this idea of just follow your passion and everything will work out, (laughs) right? And it's usually like, follow your passion, oh my gosh, (laughs) ah. And there's a scripture verse and they're in a bikini. I'm like, what has that got to do with anything? Anyway, as if following your said passion is some secret elixir to life as if passion and purpose exist fully formed out there and all we have to do is find it. But I wanna say to you today, and we've seen this in the film, your passion or your spark or your calling is not a pre-existing condition. You do not find a life of passion and purpose. You build it. You create it. You craft it. You move towards it. That's what 22 figured out. And you start construction by being brave and curious and humble. You start construction when you pick yourself up again after you've fallen for the 50th time, the 100th time, and you step forward again in the general direction of north. Our lives, and especially our spiritual lives, are not a linear path. (laughs) It's a messy backwards and forwards journey of discovery, right? That we never fully arrive at, and that might not be what we initially thought it would be. It's so interesting because in the film, Joe thinks that his spark is playing music, but it turns out that Joe's spark, his purpose, was actually teaching. And it's hinted in the film when one of his students says to him, Joe, your class was the only reason I went to school. I owe you everything. And in that moment, that he realizes that he'd been so fixated on this one thing of becoming a famous jazz musician that he completely missed everything else happening around him. The fact that he'd had such an impact on so many kids' lives through his teaching. And I resonate with this because, you know, I didn't actually study initially to be a pastor. I I studied to be a physical therapist for five years at university. And I worked for a little bit as a physical therapist, eventually transitioned to becoming a pastor. And I think at that point, my dad was like, well, that was a waste of money. (laughs) But it actually wasn't because looking back, I realized I didn't really get into that degree because of the science. I got into it because I liked working with people. And that's no different. In my job today, I still love working with people. You see, God cares less about what you do and more about who you are and who you're becoming. Joe's problem wasn't that he wanted to be a famous musician. Nothing wrong with that ambition. His problem was that he was unhappy until he became a famous musician. And because of that, he missed out on so many other things happening right in front of him. Is this speaking to anyone? Is this challenging? (laughs) I'll say it again one last time. The passion you want and desire in your life, in your relationships, in your work, in your career, in your marriage, it is not out there buried like a treasure hiding behind a tree or waiting for you to open the right door. As Liz Bohannon writes, she says, passion and purpose are not objects of desire waiting to be discovered. They are a blank canvas waiting for you to get the first splatter of paint on it. 
It's like a blank computer screen requiring 100,000 words to make a story, but you can't have 100,000 until you write 10,000, and you can't have 10,000 until you write that first word. (laughs) So that's the takeaway. Just take the next right step. (laughs) In your journey of faith, in your whatever it looks like, just take the next right step. Is that okay? Stop trying to find your passion, build it. The second thing is pay attention to the now. Uh, I wish Jess was here, she's, she's gonna be in the second serve, but Jess, my wife, is so good at this. I'm terrible, because so often I'm so fixated on what is to come, on the future, on where things are headed, that I can so easily miss out on the now. And I don't need to remind you, E-Hills, that life is hard. But while life is indeed incredibly tough, and you may be in a season like that right now, there is also always so much to enjoy in this life, even in the valleys. No matter how dark things get, no matter how hard things get, there is always something or someone to be grateful for, right? Something or someone to appreciate. I didn't pick it up the first time when I watched the the movie, but if you remember that scene where Joe is walking 22 through scenes of of his life, and there's that one scene where he's like sitting by the washing machine and he's eating in a diner and it's kind of all very sad in the sweep of his life. But then when he's remembering everything a second time in this last clip, we see that scene again. But this time, it's so different. He's eating that pie And as he eats the pie, he closes his eyes and he's just enjoying the deliciousness of that moment. And you know, here's the thing. The only difference between those two scenes is Joe's perspective of it. So that's the challenge. That's the call to pay attention to the now, to change your perspective. I'm speaking to someone today to let go of what you wanted to appreciate what is. To see regular old living as so much more than that, to see it as a gift from God and nothing less. Third and final point, stop trying to find your passion, build it, pay attention to the now, and finally, don't listen to the lies. This is a huge one. And I spoke about this last week when we explored the film Inception. In fact, Jess, my wife, spoke about this at the women's conference in detail. And there was, at first, when I, when I felt like God gave me this point, I was like, but it, this feels like repetition, God. But it felt like God said, I want you to repeat it because we still don't get it yet. <laughs> the Bible says we have an enemy and the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. In John chapter eight, he's referred to as what? The father of lies. And so as followers of Christ, we need to stand against those lies, to take those lies captive, to make them obedient to Christ. We looked at that last week. And I'll admit, that's not easy to do because every day we are bombarded with lies. In this final scene, 22 has completely lost her way. She's become what's called in the film a lost soul and she's fallen victim to lies. Lies that she keeps telling herself over and over and over again. But now, in a beautiful act of redemption, which mimics what Jesus does for us, but Joe actually gives up his life on earth to go and save her from the lies. Take a look. Not good enough. Nope, no, nothing. I just need to fill out that last box. You're dishonest. All you make are bad decisions. You are unwise and you won't make it. You're selfish. No one would ever want to be around. All you the make world needs remarkable people, and you are the least remarkable soul I've ever met. Never find your spark. spark. Oh, Imbecile! No, I can't help you. Twenty two. You just fill out that last box. I'm not getting up. You will never find your spark. There's no point. Those aren't purposes, you idiot. That's just regular old living. This is a waste of time. You only got that badge because you were in my body. That's why you. Because you have no purpose. There's no point. You'll never find your spark. Because you 
have no purpose. I give up. You ready? Huh? To come live. I'm scared, Joe. I'm not good enough. Anyway, I, I never got my spark. Yes, you did. Your spark isn't your purpose. That last box fills in when you're ready to come live. And the thing is, you're pretty great at jazzing. All you do is make bad decisions. No one would ever want to be around you. You're the least remarkable soul I've ever met. You'll never find your spark. Idiot. I don't know li what lies you've been told or what lies you believe, but I know that life will tell you lies. <laughs> maybe it was your father. Maybe it was a teacher. Maybe a friend who said something that really hurt you. You can't seem to shake. Maybe it's the lies in your own head that you tell yourself. But let me just say this. None of it is true. <laughs> I don't care who you are or what you've done. We all have limitations. We all have weaknesses. We all fall short. We all wrestle with sin. I'm not denying that. But the belief that you are not good enough or that you're destined to fail, it is a perception and it is simply not true. <laughs> God says that you are loved. God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are precious. You are a child of His. You have gifts and talents and abilities and a personality and history that can impact the world. You have dignity and you have worth. So much worth, says God, that you're worth dying for. And that is why He says, I set my son for you. That is why. That is how much I love you and want to be in relationship with you. That is the truth. That is the gospel. And we have to keep declaring those truths over the lies in our head. Amen? So as I close, I'll ask you this again. What lies are you listening to? And more importantly, what truth, God's truth, do you need to declare to those lies today? Stop trying to find your passion. Build it. Pay attention to the now. Don't listen to the lies. I hope this has been helpful for you today. <laughs> My prayer is that it would set some people free, that it would change our perspective on regular old living, and that we would come to realize that this is the day the Lord has made, and that you and I would rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Just before I close, we're gonna sing one more song together. I'm gonna pray, but I don't know if you know this, but Psalm 118 verse 24, this the verse that we've kind of anchored this whole message on today, it's in the middle of the Bible, like the middle of the middle. Psalm 117 is the shortest chapter in the whole Bible. Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the whole Bible. And Psalm 118 is right in the middle. And in the middle of the middle, in verse 24, it says, this is the day the Lord has made. And if you read a little more, you realize that the psalmist is not just talking about the present, he's actually pointing to a person, and that person is Jesus. Let me read you the full verse. It says, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. <laughs> this is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. This is thousands of years before Jesus, but he's talking about Jesus. Jesus is the cornerstone. Jesus is the way to abundant life. He is the way that we can relish each day. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And then the psalmist writes, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And he goes on, please, Lord, please save us. We need saving. 
Please, Lord, please give us success. Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God shining upon us. You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God and I will exalt you. We sung it earlier. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. I told you the last clip was the last clip, but I wanna show you one more. It's real short, but it's really beautiful. Take a look. Mr. Gardner? Yes? Do you have a moment? I think I'm speaking for all the Jerry's when I say thank you. For what? We're in the business of inspiration, Joe, but it's not often we find ourselves inspired. Oh, really? So we all decided to give you another chance. <laughs> Hopefully, you will watch where you walk from now on. But what about Terry? We worked it out with Terry. Hmm, this week. Hey, Terry, what's that over there? Look, immediately. What, what are you talking about? Oh, nothing. You were saying? Hmm? Were, were you even talking? I can't remember. Never mind. <laughs> well? Thanks. So, what do you think you'll do? How are you going to spend your life? I'm not sure. But I do know. I'm gonna live every minute of it. What are you gonna do with the rest of your life? I'm gonna live every minute of it. Let me encourage you today, E Hills. Today could be the day that you truly start living. I'm gonna ask you to stand as we close in prayer and then we're gonna sing together. Father God, thank you that you've given us this day. We acknowledge that every breath we take comes from you. Every meal, every opportunity to spend time with loved ones. This place, the mountains, you created it all. There are so many things to be grateful for. The roof over our heads, employment, health, life, it's all a gift from you. And so help us, Lord, to live every minute of it. Help us to rejoice and be glad in this day. Thank you that we don't have to wait to find purpose before we can start living our lives. Thank you that you made us on purpose and for a purpose. And so today we choose to rejoice in this day for you made it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing together.